Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Well, this is the one I mentioned in my previous video. I am going to now do the final case mods on my new server. Really haven't touched it much since uh, the last time I did something physical to it. It's running the old version of the Sigma NAS without Samba running. I'm going to be correcting that in a later software change that I may or may not put on video. But the main thing I wanted to do today was the final case mods I have in mind for this. Let me uh, open up the cover here. If you take a look at the PC server as it stands right now, I have it set up so there's a nice opening here. I rearranged the cable management of this so that all of it is contained either on top of this little panel here or on the side here. So that I got as much out of there as I could. And that accomplishes two things. It gives me the ability to get better airflow in there but also it gives me the ability to show it off a little bit. Originally, I was thinking I would put a window on the top and a window on the side, but the window on the side probably doesn't do any good right now. There's not much room here for anything to, to be seen. Definitely could see it from the top though, and you could see some of the way that the wires are laid out and my red theme, as I mentioned before, as you could see, I, last time I painted the back panel here and I painted even this little front mesh, at least one part of it. So it's gonna be red themed. It has RGB in it, but it's not remote controlled. It's controlled by the standard little RGB controller that came with the all-in-one water cooler that I have in here. This little RGB panel here that controls it, right? I'm going to do a couple of things. I am going to modify the case, build a little window into the top panel here, right in here. I am going to put a plexiglass panel on the inside of it. I have this little 16th inch panel of plexiglass. I think I bought this at Home Depot. It was like five bucks. And I'm going to use this U channel to actually seal it off so that we can seal off the little cuts where I'm gonna cut the steel at from outside view. Nice little protector. And so I have this 80 millimeter fan, all red. It has only one color to it, red R, not RGB. It is a PWM fan, even though I don't have another PWM header in here, although I may add another PWM controller. And the idea with this 80 millimeter is possibly replace this 80 millimeter here. That's also a PWM that's really not being fully utilized. And I think that will, you know, lighten it up a little bit. It'll get more glow going on the inside, the red glow anyway. And I think it'll look like a nice showpiece. But the big thing here is on the plexiglass, I'm not gonna leave it plain. I have here printed my channel logo and I printed it out in black and white and then I reversed it turned it on itself. This is the way that you wind up having something you can etch that'll come out as a positive onto the plexiglass. I did this before for my professional engineering logo, which some of you have seen in previous videos of mine, on my main everyday workstation that I'm sitting right next to right now. So I'm gonna put this little logo, it'll be this one here, is when, it, when you see it. I won't be able to get all this shading, I'm not a tattoo artist, but I'll do the best I can using a Dremel. And I'll show you that later in this video. Let me go ahead and start measuring the top in terms of where I want the window cut. And then I'm going to use the special masking tape that I have to actually mask it off so I can cut into the metal. I'll, I'll try, probably try to use the Dremel at first, but then I want to probably switch to the jigsaw in order to cut it all out. I'm going to try to round the corners a little bit so that I can have a curvature in the window and it'll make a nice cleaner look with the U-channel that I'll be putting in. So let me try to get this all mapped out. See, if I take the top and I hold it on top here, it's in the right orientation, and I put it in place here. This is a white wax marker. I should be able to then just mark off what I want here. So it'll be, this is gonna be the hard part here because there's a little bit of a, a rise in the metal. I'm gonna probably have to hammer that flat, at least on the edge where the U-channel rubber will go. But I wanna make it so it fits right in here. I'm gonna mark this right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing this way. I'm going to redo it on once I get the tape on there, but I wanted to get an idea for where it's going to be. So here's the, the window as it'll be on top. 
Okay, so here's how I did it. I did a little bit different than other case modders. The part that I'm cutting out, I didn't tape, and I used the edges of the tape to mark my borders rather than writing on a tape. I think it'll work out either way. I really only want to protect the rest of it. This will be a piece of scrap metal after this anyway, right? So now I'll go out in front of my garage and start doing the machine work on it and cut this window out. Outside now, ready to start uh, modifying this top. I'll start with the Dremel and see how that works out. But notice I put the corners on here so I get a little bit of a rounded edge to it. And then I'll do some filing to clean it up afterwards. But also notice I have my welding table here, but underneath it, I have a box down underneath here to catch all of the shavings. Otherwise that stuff gets all over the place. So I got my Dremel right here. I've got a metal cutting tip on it right now. Got many extras of those. I think the other ones are bigger, but that's okay. I'll see if I can get this started with this because this looks like it'll work pretty good. Okay, it took a while more than half an hour, but I cut slots into the appropriate places so I can now try using the jigsaw. So let me go ahead and get the jigsaw. It's already got the fine steel blade on it, and I'll see if I can finish this job off a little bit faster. Okay, let's see if we can do with this thing. Hopefully these slots are big enough. Yeah, they look they are. Not as clean, but works faster. I have to take the table off and then try to clean it up. That may take a while in itself because I'll be back to the Dremel or one of my other sanders. Okay, I've removed enough tape here so I can get to this and start cleaning it off with the Dremel. Just try to clean off some of the spots that the jigsaw didn't get. It's going to take a while. You can see there's quite a few spots that have to be fixed here. So I'll go ahead and clean that up. Okay, what I did now is I brought it down to my vise and I flattened all this out so that there's no lumps in it anymore. And now I'm going to use this stone on the Dremel, polished up the edges a little bit more. Okay, I think I got it to the point where it's the way I want it. it took a while. A couple of these areas are really un, not straight because of the jigsaw. So that's the risk of the jigsaw. I wound up wearing this thing down to a nub. I mean, it looked like uh, an hourglass before and... The other part just broke right off. But I think I got it good now. And the next step is to cut the plastic. So let me go get that, mark it off, and we'll take a little cut of that. I have to be careful with that stuff, cutting it. The first thing I'll do is I'll clean this off with some isopropyl alcohol. Not just for disinfecting these days. Cleans very well. Got all the wax pencil that I used before, that's on there. Plus, the Dremel popped up on me a couple of times. I'm stuck with that. Clean both sides of it. I'm going to be putting tape on here later. Really strong tape, as you'll see. Specifically for holding things like plastic and metal together. Clear double-sided tape from 3M. Okay, that's good. I think most of it will be covered up by the, uh, the U-channel. Okay, here's the plastic. And I want to give it enough slack to go all the way. Okay, now to cut this, I'm going to use a jigsaw. But I'm thinking I should use a piece of wood as the background for it, the backing, to prevent it from uh, splintering. See if I got anything like that that I could use. Well, I found something, a nice piece of scrap plywood, very thin. What I'll do is I'll tape this to the plywood. Okay, I have it all taped up now, and I'm going to use these slots to do my cutting. That's what's great about this table. I just have to make sure I line it up properly. And then I can just take this, and I got the box underneath there to catch all the dust. You need a very fine metal cutting blade to do something like this, and you have to go slow. Okay, let's see what we got. You know, it looks usable. The edges are not clean, but I think they're enough to where I could use it. I don't have the type of saw you need for doing something like this, so this is the best I could do. Okay, ragged, but definitely usable. Okay, well, unfortunately the camera had not been started properly. I redid the cut. As you can see here, this was the original one that I did. That was usable, but it would have annoyed me terribly. And I would have always been trying to get time to redo it, especially after the next step, which takes time. So I redid it with the Dremel and the cutting blade. And it's the same edges. And just look at the difference. That is really smooth. All I have to do here is just, you know... 
give it a little bit of an emery cloth and level it out a little bit here. We're doing really good. And that is really clean. That's what I was hoping for the other way, but I did not have the right, uh, the right cutter, the right saw. You really need a tabletop saw to do something like that. Anyway, now for the next step, I am going to put my emblem and I'm going to use the Dremel with a different head with a different cutter on it. And I'm going to put this underneath here and I'm going to cut into it. Actually, it'll probably be more like this. Is it? Let me see. Yeah, it'll be more like this. I'll have to center it exactly here. So if I put this in here, you can see how it fits perfectly in there. And then this will actually go in mirror image underneath it. And then I'll use the Dremel to actually cut it out. Let me tape it all up. Okay, I think I'm all set up here. I taped around the plastic everywhere except where I'm going to work as much as I could. See another piece I can probably put in here just to avoid any uh, as minimal amount of damage as I can. And I got this tip, very small fine tip on the Dremel, meant for uh, very fine grinding. Now you've got to sort of be like an artist on this, which I'm not, so I'll do the best I can to try to get this thing to uh, cooperate. I'm just going to trace this out. Plastic is on top of the actual piece of paper that this is printed upon. I should be able to just follow along, and I'll try my best to get the shading by going lighter and lighter into it. We'll see how it goes. I'm, again, not an artist. Let the Dremel rest for a moment. It seems like it's getting hot on this cable here. If you look at the right angle to it, you can actually see what parts were actually touched and which ones I haven't touched yet. And also parts that I missed, like this center part here. I did not try that yet. So with the right angle, you can actually observe and then correct for it. Now that this has cooled off a little bit, let me go ahead and see if I can catch these other ones. I'll see how much it is I can do with the angled light. Works much better when you get the right angle on the light. The lines are not going to be as straight as I wanted to. That's the artist part that I don't have best we can. Looks like all I have left is the uh, the letters here. Maybe a little touch-ups here and there, but other than that, it's getting close. Try to finish this off now. I think that's as much as I can do with the transparency on. So the next step is to lift the transparency and see if I can see where the spots were missed. You see here, start to see the pattern that's in there. If we look at it carefully, we can see if there's something I missed here without the transparency interfering with my perception like this and just a plain piece of paper. I could do a couple of touch-ups. I think that is for good as I'm going to get it. So what I'll do now is move on to the next step. Okay, now for the final steps in this. We got the hole cut, we've got the plastic cut, and now it's etched. I mean, the letters always come out bad for me. I don't know what it is. The symbol itself looks pretty good. I've got the U-channel that will cover up the metal part of it. And I got this scotch, this clear double-sided 10 pound, doesn't have a number on here. But if you look up scotch clear transparent mounting tape, Look for the 10 pound one. This stuff is really, really strong. I use it on my other one to hold the plastic with the etching on it to my main computer case. And that thing is not budging. I can tell you that right now. I'll put it in here and we will see how it comes out. The first thing I have to do is put the U-channel stuff in. And you got to arrange it so that it goes to where you want the junction to be. Now I sort of rounded the corners on this, as I've said before. So I should be able to follow along with the rounds. But I'm going to go ahead and let it go on the bottom here here. Oh, well, before I do that, I do get a peel out of this. There's one piece of plastic that's still on plastic protectors. Let me see. 
I really couldn't do that once it was in there because the tape is going to go on this side, on the inside of it. And then we will start feeding this in here. Start at the bottom, find a place where there's metal. We come back around to metal and we just sort of push it in place here. I did clean the edges as much as possible, but this area here is very ragged because it had the grill on it. Make sure it pushes all the way in, okay? All the way around, make sure it pushes all the way in. Then finally, when you get to the final end of it, cut it just slightly big and push it in. So if we take this and we cut it just slightly bigger than I need, I should be able to push it in and it should just sort of fall in place. That way the gap closes right, right there. And there we go. I have my rubberized metal end and I can save the rest of this for some other project. Now get the window in. Make sure you get the orientation the way you want it. I want the, this is going to be the back here. This is the front of the case. So I want this to show up this way. So it's going to be like that. So let's get that positioned right first. Sort of square it off in the thing here. And then we start, we're going to line plastic with the tape. You got to watch out in this case, it has these little, these little holders for the filter that used to be here. Make sure that there's none of those holders in the way. If you have something similar, that is, because right now it actually got in the way. It lumped up the tape. That's how I remembered it. Now I can go ahead and put the double-sided stuff, this thing here, really, really thick. So we'll put it on the window, as I said, and let's get the tape on here. And we should be able to just take this in here. Again, make sure we have the orientation right. The front, I want it to look like that in the front. So I want it like that. And then once we have it in place, we just got to sort of push it down. It will get stickier as time goes on, actually. And it will sort of meld itself in there. But there it is. Got my emblem on it. The only problem is it looks like the sticky is going to be on the other side of this grate. So that's going to pick up a lot of dust. Eventually it'll stop. But here it is now, the final PE for Doers emblem. And we'll have to see how that looks once the light is hitting it from the inside. As you can see here when I do the flashlight, it should light it up pretty interesting. Okay, let me put it back together and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so now I've taken out this black fan. It was a really thin one. I could probably use it for other purposes later on. PWM, four wire. And I put in this all red LED one, also PWM4 wire. So this will be the one that will be going in the back exhaust from this case right here in this spot right here. In fact, are you doing it here? Okay, just got to get these screws all in. Then we're ready to go to route this cable up here. We're all finished. Here we go. Look, got this fan on all red now, blowing out. This RGB one here, blowing in, and of course, the all-in-one coolers fan. Well, there you go. All done with my final mods of my server. I will go ahead now and upgrade its software, enable Samba as I've already shown in previous videos. So what do you think of the new server here? And I got my little emblem on the window. The lights out, we can actually see it reflecting on the emblem. So if you got something out of this video that you found useful in any way, or just liked in general, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. Very simple, just click on the little head here that's gonna pop up, follow along, and subscribe. You don't have to set alerts, and there's no cost involved. It'll help me grow this channel, and it'll help you get alerts the next time I come up with a useful video like this that you may find interesting or useful in some way. So until the next time, take care, and thank you for watching.